Welcome to Word Up Wednesday. I'm Pastor Daniels. Thank you so much for joining me here today on Word Up Wednesday. This is the day that the Lord have made. Let's rejoice. Let's be glad in it. Listen, this is an awesome day to praise God. This is an awesome day to give him glory, to give him honor. I'm going to tell you, it's so good to be alive and to be a representative of the kingdom of God. So let me tell you something. Let's just make sure that we give God praise. We give him glory. We give him honor today. You know, I need you to do something. I always ask you this every single Wednesday. Share this broadcast with someone. Let them know that Word Up Wednesday is on and I'm getting ready to teach the Word of God. So go ahead and share it to your contacts, share it to your family, your friends, co-workers. You know, everyone really needs to hear the Word of God. Even those who are not believers, they really need to hear the Word of God. So go ahead and share this. If you're watching on YouTube, thank you so much for watching us on YouTube. But remember, every single time you watch a video from Cornerstone Christian Center Church, we really need you to hit that like button, hit that thumbs up button. And also, if you're not subscribed, many of you have begun to subscribe. Thank you so much. But make sure you subscribe to our channel. And I don't know on your display if it shows a little bell icon. If it does, Hit that bell and it will actually send you a notification when we're live, when we're streaming a video or when even when we post a video, you will go ahead and hit that uh, notification button, that little bell and you'll get a ding and you can be able to see it. Listen, today is going to be an awesome day. It's going to be an awesome time in the word of God. I'm so excited that you're here with me today. Hello, everybody. How y'all doing? God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. You know, today is, 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 is a day that um, uh, if you're not aware, if you're watching this at our 12 o'clock session, if you're watching this at our 12 o'clock session, I just want to let you know that at, it's scheduled at 2.20 p.m., 2.20 p.m., uh, our FEMA and the FCC will be conducting a national emergency alert test. So this national emergency alert test is scheduled for today at 2.20 p.m. It should be broadcast on all radio stations, all television stations, and there will be uh, a, a wireless alert sent to all cell phones via text message. It's just like the uh, Amber Alerts that we get on our phone from time to time, and it will be a national emergency alert. It is just a test. So I'm I'm telling you that ahead of time at 2.20 p.m. that it's going to happen. So if you hear it and you hear a lot of people around you who are not aware of it, they may start to panic. You don't have any reason to panic because you know it is just a test. Glory be to God. Well, I'm ready to get to the word of God. Come on, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this day. This is the day that you've made, and we're going to continue to rejoice and be glad in it. It's come time for us to hear your word. We declare our hearts good ground to receive that word. I pray for everyone watching right now. I thank you for protecting them. I thank you for peace in their home. I thank you that we have ears to hear and a heart to understand, and I thank you for anointing me to teach. Father, I pray for those who are dealing with challenges in their body right now. And I thank you that as your word says that you have sent your word and healed them and delivered them of every destruction, that that healing will manifest physically in their body. We know the work is already done. We know when Jesus took those stripes on his back that that paid for our healing. So healing is already a decided matter in the realm of the spirit. It is already ours. It belongs to us. It is already a done deal. But Father, we thank you for it manifesting in the natural in their body right now from the crown of their head to the very sole of their feet. I thank you for for healing manifesting in their body in Jesus' name. And God, we call it done. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Come on, give God praise, give him glory, give him honor. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So now, today, I want to talk to you about Uh, Well, I'm sure you're aware that here at Cornerstone, we're in a time in the month of October, we're in a time of corporate fasting and prayer. We're praying and fasting from 7 o'clock a.m. to 12 noon, Monday through Friday. So uh, uh, we have a schedule 
uh, of, of time of fasting and prayer that we released on this past Sunday. And it's every Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. to 12 noon. We sent out emails. Matter of fact, email we sent out today, uh, it has that schedule on there. And so uh, uh, you'll, you'll be fasting for five hours. Now, if you want to go past five hours, that is just fine. Let the Lord lead you. Make sure that if you're under a doctor's care, that it is okay for you to fast with us. If you're taking medication, make sure. And that medication requires you to eat. Go ahead and follow the doctor's order. Eat, take the med medication, and then join us, okay? All right, so that means if you can't go the whole five hours, that's okay. Do the best you can, but follow your doctor's orders. Amen, amen. So because we're in a time of corporate fasting and corporate prayer together, Monday through Friday, I want to take some time to explain what biblical fasting is, and I want to take some time to talk about what a corporate fast is and what the benefits are, because I think it's very important that you understand. Now, most people that go to Cornerstone already know this, but it's a good refresher because a lot of times we have things on the altar, we have things that we're dealing with, and listen, a fast can break it. A fast can give you the solution. A fast can give you the spiritual discernment that you need. So this is some good information that we need to just review and go over and make sure during this time of fasting that we get the answers from God that we need. So I'm going to be using a, a, a part of the teaching today. I'm going to be using uh, the booklet, the journal, the fasting and prayer journal that we just released on this past Sunday. If you did not get one, you were not in church on this Sunday. Those of you that have contacted our office uh, at 954-885-0177 or sent us an email at info at icornerstone.org, uh, we have already uh, placed your journal uh, in the mail to you free of charge. Uh, yeah, it does cost us to print these up and actually mail them out, but it is worth it that we're all on the same page. So if you did not get one, you desire to have one, you have two choices. You can call our office, 954-885-0177, or you can send us an email and request it. Make sure your uh, mailing address is in that so that we can send you one of these fasting and prayer journals. Uh, you know, let's go to Joel, Joel chapter 2, Joel chapter 2, verse number 15. Joel chapter 2, verse number 15. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sanctify a fast. Call a solemn assembly. Gather the people. Sanctify the congregation. Assemble the elders. Gather the children and those that suck the breast. Let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and the bride out of her closet. Let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep between the porch and the altar. Let them say, spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thine heritage to reproach. That the heathen should rule over them, wherefore should they say among the people, where is their God? Then will the Lord be jealous for his land and pity his people. Go down to verse number 23. Verse 23 says this. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. And the floor shall be full of wheat, and the vat shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army, which I sent among you. And ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that have dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. Uh, I want to also, before I comment on Joel chapter two, I also want to go over to Second Chronicles. It's a very familiar passage of scripture, 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse number 14. And look what it says here, 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. It says, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven 
and forgive their sin and heal their land. Now, both of those scriptures together talk about God's people coming together and praying and seeking his face. Uh, uh, Second Chronicles 4 says, humble yourselves, pray and seek your face. And that's going to be very, very uh, important in just a moment. Joel 2 talks about blowing a trumpet in Zion, sanctifying a fast and calling people, calling the congregation together. So it is well documented in scripture that there are times when God will instruct a, an apostle, a pastor, or a bishop, someone who has spiritual oversight over a group of people, over a congregation, to call a fast and dedicate themselves to pray and seek God's face. That is the order of God, that from time to time, God will instruct a leader over a group of people, uh, over a congregation, over a church, over a group of churches even, that call the people together. God will say to get the people together and sanctify a fast. Call them on a fast to seek his face. And, and it's a time when people get closer to God to deny their flesh, to submit to God, to submit to his way, and to hear his voice. And according to scripture, and this is the part that I really want you to catch, according to scripture, when this happens and the people actually come together and fast and pray. And they're serious about it. They're serious about going after God, not going after the things he can give you, but going after him alone. We're seeking his face, not his hand. What does that mean? In other words, we're seeking his presence. We want God. We want God's presence around us all the time. We want we want his approval on what we're doing and what we're saying and how we're going about our business. We don't want his hand. We don't want what he provides. It's not that we don't want it. Let me put it this way. But that's not what we're seeking. That's not what we're going after. We're not going after his provision. We're going after him. And, and the Bible says it's very clear that when a group of people, glory to God, come together and do that, supernatural things happen. They happen corporately and they happen individually. They happen corporately and they happen individually. Look what Joel says, Joel 2, 15. Let's go back there. It says, blow the trumpet in Zion. That means sound an alarm, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, even the children. And he says, even the young ones that still suck the breast, he says, let the bridegroom go forth out. If you're getting ready to get married, no, this is a time where you separate. This is not the time to come together as husband and wife, and y'all know what I'm talking about. And then he says, let the priests and the ministers weep between the porch and the altar, and let them cry out to God. And he says, spare thy people. And this is what he's saying. He said, let the people, let the priests minister, let them pray. Let everybody come together and pray and say, God, spare your people. God, spare your people so that we don't become a reproach to the heathen. And, 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 then, and then he says, God, God, God's going to respond. Verse 18, then the Lord will be jealous for his land. <laughs> and pity his people. In other words, God's going to respond. And verse 23 lets us know that that's when the restoration begins to happen. Then he says he's going to restore all the years that the locust, the cankerworm, the caterpillar, and the palmer worm have eaten. You, you, you got to understand something. Supernatural things begin to happen when we come together corporately and we fast and we pray. Second Chronicles 7.14 says, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves. And that word humble themselves, that's going to be very important. So remember, they humble themselves and pray. That's a sign of fasting when you're humbling yourself and pray. And seek his face. Again, seeking his face, not seeking his hand. He says, turn from their wicked ways. Does that mean just set aside some things? You're turning away from some things. And he says, then I will hear, hear from heaven, forgive their sin. Then he's going to respond. This is how God works. And so we can expect supernatural things that we can expect miracles. Now, now we're, not, we're, we're not in control of the miracle. Don't, don't get it twisted. Don't, y'all don't change what I'm saying. We're not, we're not in control of the miracle. 
But there is an atmosphere we can set for miracles to take place. You know, in the New Testament, the Bible says that Jesus went to his hometown and he could do no mighty works there because of their unbelief. Because, because of the atmosphere they set, he wanted to move, but he couldn't. So I'm not saying we control the miracle, but we can set the atmosphere for miracles to take place. Glory be to God. And when we come together and corporately fast and pray together, that's what we're doing. We're setting the atmosphere for miracles to take place. So now let's talk about, let's talk about corporate biblical fasting. Let's talk about corporate biblical fasting and some of the fasting benefits. What is, Pastor, what is a holy consecration? What is a holy consecration? A holy consecration or consecration is a time of separating yourself and purifying or cleansing yourself of the things of this world that will try to rob and hinder the flow of Holy Spirit in your life. A holy consecration, it is a denial of the flesh. It is a denial of the flesh and putting it in subjection. It is a time of dedication to God and dedication to the kingdom of God. It is what I like to call a spiritual tune-up. It is a spiritual tune-up. You go ahead and just remember what slide we're on. Listen. It's a spiritual tune-up. I, I don't know, uh, I'm sure if you have a vehicle, if you have an automobile or a, a truck or whatever, you have a vehicle from time to time, you, your vehicle, the new vehicles these days, they'll alert you and say, okay, it's time to contact your dealer and take the vehicle in for maintenance. It's, it's telling you it's time for a tune-up. Maybe they don't do a physical tune-up where they used to, before, they would change the spark plugs and all that, but they'll change the oil. They'll change some of the fluids. They'll check some things. They're, they're making sure the, the engine, the vehicle, they'll even do a multi-point inspection, make sure all the points are lubed correctly, make sure the, the tire pressure is accurate in your tires. They're, they'll check certain things, check the shocks or the struts or whatever you have. They want to make sure the vehicle is still functioning the way the manufacturer specified for it to function. You got to catch this. When we fast and when we pray, I call it a spiritual tune-up. In other words, we tune our spirit up so it can function at its maximum potential the way God wants it to. Glory be to God. So we can hear from here clearly. So we can see clearly. So we know what we should do. It, 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 it's like it's like, uh, I don't know if y'all remember the old radio stations. A lot of things we do now is uh, uh, via the internet and we're streaming music and we're streaming uh, radio broadcasts. We're streaming podcasts and, and that's how we, we, we get our information a lot of times these days. But uh, old radio stations, they still have them, AM and FM radio station. And when you're trying to find it today, you could just punch in whatever the station uh, 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 um the station, uh, what am I trying to figure out? Frequency is, that's it, the frequency. Like if you're, you're listening to uh, on the radio, uh, I'm going to give out something, hopefully it's, it's not real, like 570 AM. <laughs> I don't listen to 570 AM. But, you know, and you could, you could actually punch it in today. But in uh, uh, older radios, you would have to actually tune it. You actually have to turn the dial. And you could actually hear the noise. <sighs> And then it starts to come in clear. Starts, and when you actually lock on that frequency on your receiver, your radio receiver, boom, that signal that's being broadcast from the radio station to your radio, to your radio receiver will come in nice, sharp and clear. That's what fasting and prayer is. It's us tuning ourselves to God's frequency so we can hear him clearly. Glory be to God. Did you receive that? Say amen. Hallelujah. So let's talk about what is biblical fasting. What is biblical fasting? And you'll find that in the fasting and prayer journal on page 17. On page 17. What is biblical fasting? Biblical fasting is a time when we demonstrate that we're in control of our temple. Biblical fasting is the voluntary abstaining from food. Voluntary abstaining from food. 
Uh, the expression used in Leviticus and number is humble your souls, implying the sacrifice of the personal will. It's the humble of your souls, sacrificing your personal will. The purpose of the fast is to consecrate an individual or a group of people. It is depriving, depriving your flesh of the carnal appetites and desires. Depriving your flesh of the carnal appetites and desires. Now, for a moment, let's talk about let's talk about what, what is the proper fasting technique. The proper fasting technique, and you know, we, we gotta we gotta be really, 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 really uh, careful that we fast correctly. You could go ahead. Uh, come back to me just for a second because I want to talk to you because the type of fast that we're on, the type of fast that I'm teaching about is not intermittent fasting for weight loss. That's very popular these days. And for a lot of people, it works. And that, that's really great. So we're not talking about, you know, intermittent fasting so that you could burn more fat. We're not talking about that. We're talking about a time where we are voluntarily not eating food so that we could deprive our flesh of its carnal appetites and desires. I want to hear my stomach rumble and tell me, hey, you haven't eaten in a while. And I talk to my body and say, body, I'm not feeding you. I'm feeding my spirit to get closer to God. That's what this fast is all about. It's about getting closer to God. It's about drawing nigh to God so that he could draw nigh to us. So let's talk about the proper fasting technique, the proper fasting technique. Um, that's found in Matthew chapter 6. I don't know if I gave you that. I don't know if I gave you that. I don't know if that's there. I guess it's not there. I didn't put it down. But let's just go there real quick. You can bring the camera back on me. Matthew chapter 6. Because I want you to see it in scripture here. Matthew chapter 6. It's in, it's in the guide. It's in the guide. Matthew chapter 6. And we're going to go verse 16 through verse 18. Matthew chapter 6. And I typed in the wrong. There we go. Matthew chapter 6, verse 16. Are y'all getting this? Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Matthew chapter 6, verse 16. Look what it says here. It says, moreover, when you fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces, that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. So if we just look at this before we go back through the, uh, 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 the notes and, and the PowerPoint, look what this scripture says. He says, when we fast, when we fast and pray, whether it's individually or corporately, look what he says for us to do. And this is Jesus talking. He says, don't be of a sad countenance. Don't, don't try to look like, he said, don't appear unto men. He said, don't try to look like you're fasting. You, you know, don't, don't, don't walk around. Like, oh, I'm so hungry because I'm fasting. Oh, I don't know if I'm going to make it through. Oh, you're trying to look deep and spiritual. You know, that type of thing. He says, no, don't appear to others who don't know about the fast, who are not on the fast with you. If it's a corporate fast, don't let them in on it. Don't let them know you're fasting. He said, don't appear. Look, look what he says, verse 17. Verse 17, he says, but thou, when thou fastest, anoint your head and wash your face. Anoint your head. Take, take some olive oil. Just put a little olive oil right there. Anoint your head. Wash your face. And then he says, wash your face so that you could, it doesn't look like you're just of a sad countenance. And look, 18, he explains why. That thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy father, which is in secret. And thy father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. And that's the whole reason why we fast. We're going after him 
and we know he will respond. So let's talk about, let's talk about the proper, the proper uh, technique for fasting. The proper technique, the proper fasting technique. Let's go back to that. So first of all, don't announce that you are fasting to appear to be spiritual. Don't announce it. Don't announce it to anyone. Dedicate time as you fast. Dedicate time to pray as you fast. You just don't want to fast and not pray. Okay, you want to pray as you fast. Dedicate some time. Dedicate some time early in the morning when you begin the fast, 7 a.m. Dedicate some time. Dedicate some time at the close of the fast. If you're going at 12, you're stopping at 12 or you're stopping at at one or two or three, dedicate some time. Father, I thank you that you got me through this fast day successfully in the name of you. Dedicate some time. Dedicate some time in between. It says dedicate time to pray as you fast. Dedicate time to read and study the word. Dedicate time to read and study the word during the fast. Dedicate time to watch or listen to sermons. We made it so easy now. You can go back and watch any of our sermons that are already posted on YouTube and play it back and listen to it. Because the whole objective here is you're focusing on getting closer to God. You're focusing on getting closer to to God. And so you want to dedicate that time, maybe, maybe during the fast, maybe 7 a.m., you, you're on your way to work and, and okay, you, you're driving. You could actually put the YouTube, put YouTube on, put on one of our sermons and listen to it. Don't look at it. Listen to it as you're driving to work and you're dedicating that time so that you can get closer to God. Turn that radio off. Turn the other stuff off. Take all those distractions out. Focus on driving and listen to that word. And you will be amazed at the revelation, personal revelation you'll receive. You, you heard the message before, but now because you've combined it with a fast, you're going to hear something that you didn't hear the first time. And God will speak to you. So that's the proper fasting technique. Let's look at, let's look at what are the benefits, the benefits of fasting. Let, let's, let's go over to Matthew chapters number 17. Matthew chapter number 17, and I think we're going down to verse number 14. This is going to, this is going to be really good. Are y'all getting this? Yes. <laughs> Matthew chapter 17, verse number 14. Look what it says. Look what Jesus says here. He says, and when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is a lunatic. And sore vexed, for oftentimes he falleth into the fire and oft into the water. And I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. Bring the boy to me. Bring the son. Bring the son to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil and he departed out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart, or separately, or privately, and said, why could not we cast him out? How come we didn't have spiritual authority over that particular demonic spirit? How come we couldn't cast that demon out? I want you to catch that. And Jesus said unto him, because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, remove hinder to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Verse 21 is our focus verse. How be it this kind ha, goeth not out but by prayer and fasting, this kind. Jesus says, this kind, this kind. Listen, there are certain issues, certain problems, certain difficulties, certain circumstances, certain obstacles that can only be overcome, certain demonic spirits that you can only take authority over through fasting and prayer. So that's a benefit. 
That's a benefit that when, when you see that something is too hard, when you see something, is, it, it, you, it, it's, it looks like you can't accomplish it. You prayed about it. You prayed about it. You prayed about it. Did you fast and pray? Did you commit to a fast? Did you ask God, God, lead me on a fast so I could overcome this thing? And he said, this kind only goes out but by fasting and prayer, by prayer and fasting. So if you're dealing with a this kind issue, if you're dealing with the issue where it looks like it's just too hard for you to overcome, why don't you consider it? That's another reason for you to be on this fast with us so that you could overcome it. Look what, look what Isaiah 58 says. Isaiah 58 says here. And uh, you'll find me on page 18 in the booklet. Isaiah 58. And we're going to go to verse number, I believe we're going to verse number 6. Isaiah 58, verse number 6. Look what it says here, because we're going to still talk about the benefits of biblical fasting. Isaiah 58, verse number 6 says, Is not this the fast that I have chosen? And look what he says, the purpose of this fast. To loose the bands of wickedness, to undo heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free, and that you break Every yoke. Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry and thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house? When thou seest the naked that thou cover him, that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh. You begin to have some compassion. Verse 8. Then shall thy light break forth as the morning. Underline that. Then shall thy light break forth as the morning. And thine health shall spring forth speedily. Glory to God. And thy righteousness shall go before thee, and the glory of the Lord shall be thy re reward. In other words, thy rear guard. <laughs> then shalt thou call, and the Lord shall answer. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thou shalt cry, and he shall say, Here I am. If thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke, the putting forth of the finger, the speaking of vanity, and if thou shalt draw out thy soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall thy light rise in obscurity and thy darkness shall be as noonday. And the Lord shall guide thee continually. He's going to tell you where to step. And satisfy thy soul in drought. And make fat thy bones, and thou shalt be like a watered garden, and like a spring of water whose waters fail not. Now, we got to go back through this because I want you to see this. Oh, glory to God. But these are the biblical benefits of fasting. Look, look what happens. Look what happens. You go back to the slide. Look what happens on, 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 when we fast. According to Isaiah 58. According to Isaiah 58. What happens is we overcome strongholds. Strongholds are destroyed. Strongholds, according to the New Testament, are thought patterns that actually take you away from the will of God in your life. So these strongholds, these these entrenched thought patterns, entrenched thought patterns, these thought patterns that have been developed in your mind, either through teaching, either through culture, either through custom, these are thought patterns. Maybe you were trained to think this way. Maybe in your upbringing, everybody in your house thought this way. Maybe you learned it in school and you began to think this way. But it is not the way of God. It is contradictory to the word of God. And it has become a stronghold. In other words, that's the way you think. And you think, well, that's just the way I am. No, that's the way you were trained. But that's not the way your spirit says you are. It's a stronghold and it's dominating your thought patterns. And so you could break that through fasting and prayer. So we overcome stronghold. We overcome soul ties. Ha! You could get connected to the wrong person. That person could lead you the wrong way. And because there's an emotional, psychological tie to that person, that person is actually drawing you away from God. That's why God told the children of Israel. That's why God told the Israelites before time, in the ancient time, in the Old Testament. He tells them, he says, don't you marry 
them because they're going to draw you away from me. He said, you, when, you, when you form a soul tie with people who worship idol gods, when people who worship false gods, when you make a soul tie with them and marry them, they're going to take you away. That's why I do not advise anyone to, to be in a 50-50 partnership, business partnership with someone who does not follow God like you do because they're going to eventually draw you away. You need to be in the 51%, they're in the 49% so you can make the final decision on which way to go. But you don't want to get so entrenched. And it doesn't mean you can't have associates that are not saved. That's not what he's talking about. He's saying he's talking about intimacy where they draw you away. Because I'm going to tell you, when you get close to someone, I don't care how much, I don't care how much you don't want to take on some of their idiosyncrasies, you do take it on. You hang around someone for long enough, go out to dinner with them long enough, go out to lunch long enough, you're going to find yourself laughing just like them. <laughs> yeah, and it's going to be something that you pick up and you didn't even know it. You didn't learn it. You just pick it up and, and you'll be drawn away. That's why the, the Bible says, be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners and morals. Who you hang with is what you'll become. And so this is what he's saying with these soul ties. They can be broken. You know when you... <laughs> You know when someone is having an effect on you, they pulling your strings, they're not even around. A soul tie has been developed and it needs to be broken in the name of Jesus. And that's one of the benefits of fasting and praying. It will break these soul ties. It will break bad habits. Bad habits. I've had people call me, Pastor, I, 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 I've, been a, I've been a smoker all my life. And I, I, I know I shouldn't smoke. I know it's not good for my health. I know it is a, I'm addicted to the nicotine and the cigarettes, but I need to break it. I need to, I need to dominate. I need to, I need to tell my flesh that I'm in control. And I say, well, I know you prayed about it. Yeah, I prayed about it, but pastor, it's just so hard. And I say, yes, it is hard. It is hard because it's an addiction. It's an addiction. It's an addiction. It's an addiction. But it can be broken. Why don't you consider fasting and praying? Why don't you consider going on a fast? Some of them, I said, why don't you, you know, pray about, pray about how long the fast should be. And then you seek God and your whole purpose is to break this addiction or break this bad habit. And every single time they will call me back, pastor, I'm free. I am free. It is broken. I've been trying to do this for 20 years and God did it in three days. <laughs> Glory to God. You see, this is the power of fasting and praying. Look, look what Isaiah 58 says. Look what Isaiah 58 says. Verse 6 it says, is not this the fast that I have chosen to loose the bands of wickedness, any wicked activity that's going on in your life? He said it's going to be loosed from you in the name of Jesus to undo the heavy burdens, if you feel like, oh my God, if you feel like the weight of the world is on your shoulders and you feel like you're under so much pressure and you feel like, oh my God, I am so, uh, 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 I can feel myself going into a depression. I don't, I feel discouraged. I feel fatigued. I feel weighed down. He said it can be broken through fasting and prayer because it will undo Glory to God, the heavy burden. Let the oppressed go free. And this is the part I love. And it breaks every yoke. Glory to God. I don't care what yoke the devil tried to put on your life. The Bible says through fasting and prayer, you can break it in the name of Jesus. It can be broken now in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Woo, I got so much more. I'm going to have to come back next week. I'm going to have to come back next week and, and finish all the rest of this. But, but let's, let's, talk about, let's, talk, let's talk about what are we going to pray about? What are we going to pray about, okay, on this fast? Are y'all getting this? Are y'all getting this? Are y'all getting this? Glory to God. Okay, so on this fast, on this church fast, this is what I want you to pray for. And you'll find this. Let me get the page number in, the, in this book. Uh, yeah, go, go back to me just for a second. 
in this book, there's several things in here. We, we left a lot of things in here about general prayer time. But I, I want you to see this. Uh, what page am I looking for here? Ooh, I'm so excited. People getting free in Jesus' name. People getting free in Jesus' name. People, somebody, somebody just got free. Somebody just got free in Jesus' name. There it is. So page eight. Page eight in the Fasting and Prayer Journal on page number eight. Right here, you'll see it with the map there. Okay. All right. That's the page I want you to do. Every day, this is what I want you to pray for. Go back to the presentation. Every day, this is what I want you to pray for. First, you want to pray for the United States of America. Pray for our country. We need to pray. You know, a lot of things we can prevent from happening. A lot of things we could slow it down from happening. But we got to pray. God hears us and answers when we pray. First Corinthians, uh, not first Corinthians, I'm sorry. First John chapter 5, 14 and 15 says, if we ask anything, anything according to his will, he will hear us. And if he hear us, we know we have the petition that we ask of him. Listen, when we pray, God responds. When we pray according to the word of God, God responds. So on this fast, pray for the United States of America. Secondly, pray for your unsaved family members, your unsaved friends, your unsaved loved ones. Make sure you pray for them. Thirdly, pray for protection. Pray for health. Pray for provision for you and your family. Let me say that again. Pray for protection, pray for health, pray for provision for you and your family. Next, pray for our elected officials. That means you're going to pray for the president of the United States and his family. You're going to pray for the governor of the state of Florida or the governor of the state you live in and the family. You're going to pray for the mayors and their family. You're going to pray for the commissioners and their family, those who sit on the council and their family in the name of Jesus. You're going to pray for the pastor and family. You're going to pray for a pastor, your spiritual leader, your covering, your apostle, your bishop. You're going to pray, and you're going to pray for the family. And you're going to pray for our local schools. And when you pray for our local schools, you pray for the school board members. You pray for the school superintendent. You pray for the principals. You pray for all of those that are in the administration of each local school that's affected by your children. And then pray for the teachers. Please pray for the teachers. And pray for the children in the name of Jesus that God will keep them protected. There are more things on here that we pray for. I didn't list them all, but you're going to pray for our local economy. Pray for business and industry, for jobs. You're going to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And this is what we're praying for every single day. So, so it's going to be so easy. You pick this up. You turn to page eight and say, Father, this is what I'm praying for. This is what I'm praying for. You quote 1 Timothy 2, 1 through 2. It talks about praying for, for those who are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godless, godliness and honesty. Pray for these things. And then, and then, as you're praying, as you're praying, you're going to turn over to page number six, and you're going to, all these things, building yourself up in the spirit, and you're going to start saying, I am a new creature in Christ, predestinated for greatness. I'm a child of God, fully accepted by the Father. And you declare these things to yourself every single day. And then you make the daily morning confession for believers found on page five. See, we're giving you so much so many resources for you to pray for. Page number two, in your time of prayer, on this fast, in the name of Jesus, we bind generational curses. In the name of Jesus, we bind sickness and disease. In the name of Jesus, we bind all works of darkness. In the name of Jesus, we overthrow wickedness and every evil work. In the name of Jesus, we declare that the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. We declare we shall live long and strong. We release our angels to go forth and bring to us all the things necessary to promote the kingdom of God. We call from the north, the south, the east, and the west 
people of precious life faith to come and assist in every capacity of Cornerstone Christian Center Church. We declare no weapon formed against us shall prosper. We declare all of our needs are met with heaven's best. And you do that, every, and we've given you the resources so that you, on this fast, we're going after God. And we're going to watch supernatural things happen in our life. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Now, you got to be with me next week because I got so much more I didn't even get to. So much more. Glory be to God. I didn't get a chance to get to. Because every time that you go on a fast, whether it's a corporate fast with a church body or it's an individual fast, it should be a time of spiritual growth for you. It should be a time of spiritual advancement for you, spiritual growth. So we're going we're to go over that next week on some of the things that you can expect to receive as a result of this time of prayer and fasting, this time of fasting and prayer. Glory to God. I know you enjoyed today. Word up Wednesday. Come on, let's give God praise. Let's give him glory. Let's give him honor. Wow. Uh, again, if you were not with us at the beginning, and make sure you stay tuned. I, I know I'm giving the announcements now, and y'all know the format of Word Up Wednesday, but stay in here. Don't, don't click off just yet. Stay with me. Stay with me. Stay with me. Listen, today is October 4th, October 4th, and the federal government is conducting a nationwide test of the emergency alert system, emergency alert system. So you will receive alerts on your television, on your radio, through the FCC. They're going to be sending out alerts. It's a nationwide alert at 2.20 p.m. 2.20 p.m. FEMA, Federal Emergency Management Agency, and the FCC, Federal Communications uh, Commission, will be sending out an alert on every radio, every radio uh, station, every television station. Send out an alert at 2.20 p.m. Also, the FCC is going to conduct the test, the FEMA, going to conduct the test on every mobile device, every cell phone will get a national alert, just like we do when we get Amber Alerts in the state of Florida, uh, missing child or whatever the issue is, and it comes right to your phone. Everybody goes, now this alert is going to everyone. So you could be out somewhere, you could be on your job, and all of a sudden everybody's phone is going off, you don't have to be alarmed because you know the alert is coming at 2.20 p.m. Make sure you're aware of it and make sure those who are around you, like right before 2 o'clock or so, anybody around, hey, you know, we're getting an alert at 2.20. It's scheduled to be at 2.20. I don't know if it's really going to happen, but at 2.20, you know, you let them know, you know, you already know. It was on the news. It's been broadcast, but make sure you're aware because you don't need to panic. Just need to be aware. Glory to God. All right. Listen, it, I know you join us every Monday for Power Mondays, 7 o'clock a.m. to 7.15 a.m. You know the number. The number is 848-888-9494. It's our time of prayer on the phone every Monday. Even when we're not fasting, <laughs> join us on the phone, on the prayer line for that. And keep joining us every Wednesday for Word Up Wednesday at 12 noon and 7 p.m. And wow, didn't the Lord show up in this place on this past Sunday for our worship service? I mean, we had a time. I'm still singing. I'm still singing to the Lord. That's right. One thing I, I've decided, I, uh, one thing I, I've desired, and I will seek out, I will dwell in the house of the Lord. It, it comes from that scripture in Psalm 27. You know, I'm going to tell you, God has been so good. 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 I'm going to see the goodness of the Lord. How about you? Are you going to see the goodness of the Lord? Well, it's offering time. It's time for us to return our tithes and give our offerings so we can advance God's kingdom in the earth. We've made it so easy for you to give. There are four ways to give. You can give online at iCornerstone.org or through the CCC app. You can contact us directly with the address on your screen and phone number. You can give by mail. If you choose to mail your checks or money orders to the address on your screen, you can do so. Or you could set up your own profile and use the text to give method. Whichever method is the most convenient for you, 
go ahead and use that method and glorify God in your giving. Hold up your device and repeat this after me. Say, Father, I thank you for this tithe or offering that I am planting into your kingdom. Your word says it will come back in good measure. Press down, shake it together and running over. I thank you for the full measure of favor in Jesus name. Amen. Glory to God. Wow. I'm going to tell you something. I, I'm so glad that you joined me. I, I, it seems like you guys are right here with me, right here with me. Wow. It's so good that we could have this connection, even though it's electronic. We could have this connection and stay committed to one another through the word of God. Listen, I want you to terrify the devil today. Yeah. Terrify him. Make him sorry he ever tried to attack you by standing up, by being a good representative of the kingdom of God. You are an ambassador for Christ. You represent the kingdom of heaven. So make sure you're a good representative, representation of heaven here on earth. Glory to God. Well, go in peace, prosper, and remember Jesus is Lord. I'll see you next time.